the Monarnik Larchmont Continuing Education Center hosted their Notable Neighbor series with award-winning producer Fred Berger and film instructor Dr. Michael DiGennaro. LMC TV was the only press allowed at the event, and we're thrilled to present our exclusive interview with Fred, my former student, by the way, and a former LMC TV volunteer, now the producer of the acclaimed Hollywood musical La La Land. Film director David O. Russell and the Dillon Brothers are only a few of Amerinic High School's famous alums. But tonight, we'll get to sit with another famous alum and former LMC TV volunteer and staff member, Fred Berger, who you may know as the Golden Globe winning producer of La La Land. City of stars, are you shining just for me? I'm hey, so Kat. excited to have How you are here. Thank you for having me. Um, I just kind of want to talk about what it's like being home, being here. What what is what is going th through your head? I mean, you're kind of a local celebrity now, so I just want to hear a little bit. <laughs> that from is a that. very weird thing, and I <laughs> deny that uh, wholeheartedly. Um, I come home a lot. I love seeing my, you know my family still lives here, and so I love being home. Actually, it makes me sort of relax. And I'm a very stressful job, so I love being back with my family here. Being up on that stage today was very surreal. It's you know I've been in this audience so many times. I had a lot of my friends from high school and family, friends, and uh, it felt bizarre. I didn't feel like I've earned it. I know some of the other people have done this program and I don't think I'm there yet, but it was, <laughs> I did it because, uh, one is I love this community. I'm doing what I'm doing because I was lucky enough to grow up in a place where the arts were not seen as, as sort of small or as a hobby or as something you cut in the arts programs, but uh, something to pursue and something to uh, put a big premium on. So I wanted to sort of be able to recognize that and pay some kind of homage to it. And also Dr. De Janeiro, he's the guy for me. He's, you know, there's two or three teachers along the way that inspire you and he was, he was mine. And you often don't get the opportunity to say thank you to those people. You think of them and you don't have their emails and you're busy. And to be able to have a conversation with him about movies and to be able to sort of publicly recognize him was, was a thrill and, I, and really the reason I came back. And trust me, we all felt it. Oh, so now great. that you're home, uh, what exactly do you have to have when you're here? Like, what can't you miss? Like, what do you have to eat? Where do you have to well, go? Like, obviously, what? Sal's Pizza is top <laughs> of the list, and I heard that they deliver now, they which do. is very exciting. Eats delivery, yeah. um, we spent many a late night at Pazza Bahaba in Porchester. I don't know if you've ever been yeah. there. Yes, Ch chili cheeseburger wedge. <laughs> Um, there's no delis in LA. You can't go to delis there. So uh, a good, like a good Anthony sandwich for yes, sure. A good egg yeah. and cheese. Uh, but uh, just you know, I just like walking around the towns like Larchmont and Americ, and just it hasn't changed that much. And I just mm -hmm. feel uh, you, you think that when you hit your 30s, you're gonna feel like decades away from being here, and it actually feels like yesterday that I was roaming through these halls wow. late to class and you know cutting them. And <laughs> I guess it also feels almost like grounding you. Like it kind of grounds you, like you're just like in another place and it's like, oh, nothing's really changed here, so that's nice. Yeah, it is. It's it's nice to be home, actually, and to be... What's weird is, you know, I've just lived a pretty crazy last six months. I mean, making that movie was amazing and other movies, and I was just in the mountains shooting with Kate Winslet and Idris Elba were helicoptering to set, you know what I mean? Wow. It was just insane and amazing. And then dropping down every weekend to these crazy events or the Golden Globes, you know, it's very, very surreal experiences that you kind of think about when you're yeah. in these classrooms and never imagine you'll be a part of. And now I'm shooting a movie in Westchester and I'm gonna be living in my dad's house. Oh, and so it's very grounding, it's good. Uh, Making movies is, is about the process of making the film. That's the joy of it, not the awards and the cocktail parties. And so it's helpful to have things that ground you and being home and being with the people who can cut you down and are not impressed by all of it is, uh, is very necessary. As a son of an immigrant, what message would you give to the immigrant community about coming to this country and just succeeding? Because I think that message that you said before was, it was, is important to share. Well, come, if only to prove Trump wrong in every way. Um, we need diverse voices, and you know, I'm working with a lot of female filmmakers and diverse filmmakers, and I think stories that come from a place of authenticity, whether it's a guy who loves musicals or an immigration story or any experience, I love international film because you get transported to those stories. So uh, I think we need, what makes this country unique and special is not only our diversity, but the way that we uh, champion and accept. We can be American mm -hmm. while never losing what made us, you know, in my case, French and Egyptian and Jewish and all the rest of it. You know, we don't have to sort of lose our previous identity in order to also be a fabric of this country. So in terms of telling stories, mm -hmm. that is, you're always, you're always telling something from a perspective that is specific to you. There's a sort of cliche of write what you know. And I think that's true, but also write something cinematic. You know what I mean? How do you take something personal? Like District 9 is a great example. Mm -hmm. It's a guy from South Africa who wanted to tell a story about apartheid, but he did it through a really cool sci-fi movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're an immigrant, 
tell either you know a movie like Moonlight or find a way that is your personal story but make it into you know through genre or through romance or through comedy or whatever it's uh, we need every type of story so why did you decide to, to make movies like why is film your passion why did that call to you you know there's a lot of seminal moments that I think are sort of combined uh, to create this burning desire at some point and one of them I just always love movies but that was more as a fan then I took photography here, and that made me sort of see through what was just an image and understand it uh, in a deeper way and make me appreciate it. And I still love cinematography. And then I did editing and video with Mr. Witch, and that was like, I want to oh, I want to wow. be doing this. And he that, actually hosts our, our show. No yeah, way. Can, yeah. you tell, can you say hello to him? Because Absolutely. he was a huge influence, too. Yeah. And so that gave me the bug to sort of, I was like, I just need to be a part of this in any way possible. So I started, you know, taping bar mitzvahs and started working for LMC TV. And I remember distinctly, you know, directing the Halloween episode. And I was, and I felt like I helped arrange the set and the choreography and the whole thing. And I was directing, you know, camera one to camera three and wide and pushing in. And I was trying to, you know, make it <laughs> ambitious and artistic as much as I could. And the more you, you know this, and this is why you guys are doing what you're doing, is the more you get a taste of the thing that feels unattainable and making art feels impossible because yeah. you know how to go to law school, you know how to go to business school, you know how to be a doctor, and those are all challenging and, and gratifying in different ways, but there's a path. Making movies feels completely amorphous and, and untenable. So I just kept getting my hands on things that made me feel part of it. And then Dr. De Janeiro sort of made me understand that movies operated on a different level than what I was experiencing, and the more I got into that idea, and the same time that Aronofsky was starting to make movies, mm -hmm. and Spike Jones, and all these directors that kind of embody that idea of movies as more than just something as superficial entertainment. And so that collision of the 90s, which was an amazing decade for movies, and people who taught you to sort of look at them more actively, mm -hmm. just I just was like, I need to do it. You know when you're editing something, and you don't even realize you just pulled two all-nighters because you want to make it perfect. <laughs> I'll do really with that. You know, they say if you find uh, something you love, you never work a day in your life. And that's, yeah. I, I don't stop working. And luckily, I love what I do um, because I never I never sort of want to turn it off. So I'm very lucky. Oh, my God. Ugh, I'm, like, floored by you right now. But I want to talk about <laughs> LMC because be. you can't, I can't even begin to tell you what it felt like to read the journal news and scream my head off as I'm coming home from uh -huh. class and being like, oh, my God, what? So please tell us like what your best memory was, how you got involved with LMC. Like that is huge for us, huge for our volunteers and our interns and everyone really. It's just, it's that you even shouted us out and we didn't even know. Oh, so please well, tell us like what your best memory is. That's very sweet. Like I was saying, is a big part of why I'm doing what I'm doing because you start to get uh, just more and more of the bug because you start doing it, even in a more limited way, in a more local way. And I had this sense that maybe. A lot of people weren't necessarily watching what I was doing, mm -hmm. but that's the best time to sort of practice, you know, mm -hmm. and sort of figure out what you're good at. And because when you're young, everything feels not only impossible, but you don't even know where your place is in the whole thing. You don't even understand mm -hmm. what the various jobs mean other than actor and director. Um, and so it just gave me a chance to kind of hone my skills and realize that, like, putting images together in a certain sequence and combining that with uh, actors and people it is, was, was exhilarating. And I think that, that Halloween special I remember so vividly because it <laughs> felt like directing. I felt like I had some influence. And then there was some parade that I hosted that was near Emlyn Theater um, that I was like both the host and then edited it together. And, and there's a pride, you know, you know what it's like when you're part of something that you do show to people and you're proud of how it comes out. And sometimes you're, you want it to be better, but sometimes you're like, you want to show your family and your friends and you, when people see it and they're in any way affected by it, yes. it's like a, a little sugar high that you just want more of, you know? And LMC TV was awesome. It paid, it paid for my, you know, lunch money, and it was also taught me that I, I liked, you know, that this is something I shouldn't give up. It's not just a little hobby, but something I should pursue. So how important is a place like LMC? I think sometimes people forget that public access is just like, oh, oh they cover town hall meetings and whatever. But it's like people are actually recording those. So like how important is yeah, it for I mean, people to realize that like, you can come and hone your skills, whether you want to do TV or journalism or movies, like this is a place where you can start. Absolutely. I think, first of all, it's incredibly important. It, it provides a service. Those town hall meetings, you know, are still official public record. There's mm -hmm. this this is necessary stuff. The town, we're only as good as our communities, you know, we are all interested in national politics, but it starts at the local level. And I think just on a basic uh, public service level, it's it's a really important component of news and transparency and, and all the rest of it. But as as a sort of gateway drug to making art, I think it's there's what it's not LA. You're not gonna work on a movie set mm -hmm. most likely here. You're not gonna 
be able to create a big feature film here. It's not uh, Tish, you know, like New York, there's a lot more access. So LMC is one of the few outlets for that level of creativity. And so thank God it was there because it was definitely one of the, you know, attributes that led me to to doing what I do. So I'm very grateful for it. And, um, you know, even MHS Info, which this high school has, mm -hmm. is so, whether it's about journalism or making movies, that's, it, it tells people, oh, you know what, you can kind of do it. It feels like doing it for real. And so, like, Maybe it's not that impossible. Maybe I should give this a shot. And this is huge for our like volunteers. Like they're they're gonna eat this up. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the film. Like, what does La La Land mean to you? Like, it is a huge hit. But you know, what does it mean to you? It has so many connotations to it. So I just kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit. Yeah, and we could talk for hours about it. The, <laughs> it's really moving. I mean, I can't even explain what it's like that it's touched so many people and affected so many people around the world. I mean, it's it's internationally kind of uh, like really... absolutely tearing up because I was like, that movie made me cry a Aww, lot, and that ending again. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Um, and there's it sort of affected the culture in a way we never expected. Um, so all that's amazing. But if we had made it and wrapped it up, put it in a box, and hidden it forever, it still would have been the most sort of joyous and special experience of my life. It was. Damien became an incredibly close friend and almost little brother to me, and, and the process of getting it over the hill was daunting, but then when we were making it, it was just, it was what you dream about when you're a kid, is not only making a movie and expressing yourself, but doing it with a group of people you love mm -hmm. and expressing something personal, and that movie is entirely our story, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that's why some people have an emotional reaction to it, whether it's based on a romance, like a, a relationship you had, or a desire to sort of say something in the world and that's what Emma's character really is like she's just so desperate to kind of articulate something artistic in the world and feels totally rebuffed and humiliated and Ryan inspires her to be authentic to her voice and she expresses this doubt of I'm not good enough I should go back to school I don't I'm not I don't belong here and everyone who has who aspires to make art has that feeling it's a step along the way including for us while we were making you know trying to get the movie made and failing and so the fact that something that is so tiny and personal and like uh, contains so much of us in it is reaching people is still we, we're having trouble processing that it's a really surreal and, and just it'll never be like this again like I'll make yeah. a lot of good movies hopefully that will do well or do badly but it's it'll never be like this one because it's sort of uh, we grew up making this movie and I think also you can kind of just like feel it I think that's what makes it so special it's like you know there's like a group of people behind it that just loved it because it, it just feels special. Oh, so I, I, loved, nice to I loved it. From, from the craft service to the director, everyone was pretty, you can, I mean, you can feel it, pretty happy making that movie. Um, so I just have an, another question. Many students and volunteers have the same dream as you did to create something that the public can enjoy and love. Uh, what advice would you give to them at this point in your life? And also, what kind of advice do you wish you had gotten before you I kind of started? I think that's probably the same thing. And there's a cliche of like, if you want to do something, just believe you can do it and all that. And I, I don't know if it's exactly that, but I do think, you know, luckily I have a lot of tenacity and a lot of sort of naive confidence. And I always felt like if I want to do something, I'm just not going to stop until I do it. And the more people told me it was hard or you shouldn't do that or you should, just, you should find a safer way in, the more I felt kind of rebellious in wanting to prove them all wrong. And no, I didn't, I had no idea how I would get there, but I had this like innate, sort of conviction that I would and that I needed to. Um, and so what I'd say is it's actually, it's not not hard, but it's not as impossible as I think I felt it was in a sense. And there are paths to doing this and there are ways in. And the hardest step in a way is getting your foot in the door. And after that, you just have to work really hard mm -hmm. and want it more than anyone else. Be ambitious. Have ta you, you also know your advantages. You're young, you have time. I have a house now and a wife and soon I'll have kids maybe. And, and that diminishes my ability to watch a lot of movies and read a lot and develop my taste and passion. When you're a kid, you could be reading books and comic books and seeing devouring movies. You have no excuse not to be doing that. That feeds, if that's what you want to, if you want to be an artist, go to museums. But do, like, feed your passion in a very big way. Like, you have no excuse not to. Because if you don't make it, that's totally on you. Damien watched movies. He did not play sports and he didn't read comic books he just watched old movies incessantly and so he was it was inevitable that he would make it do you know what I mean because yeah. he just was so versed in it and so deeply passionate and ambitious and not wanting to just don't make the success making a movie or writing a script or one little don't set the bar low set it impossibly high because then if you miss you still miss like up here mm -hmm. you know and so believe that you have a right to be at the table because when you get there you realize everyone's human everyone's like 
the fact that you're interviewing me is sort of a joke to me because I was like <laughs> not that far away from where you are, and it's just a lot of hard work, a little bit of luck, and a little bit of taste, and it's it's not uh, you can you can have a pretty crazy ride. <laughs> It was a pleasure to be able to interview Fred here at his old high school. From all of us at LNC TV, I just want to say a huge thank you to Fred. We are all in La La Land. For The Local Live, I'm Kat Galliano.